Pastor. What a what a stirring, stirring speech, and and really wonderful to listen to. You know, when I when I heard it, I, I guess for me the singular message was basically uh, I don't know. I was struggling to kind of find a word for this, but if you think about it, uh, it's it's like the power of networks, right? I mean, it's like a bet. You, he, uh, Elias had all these examples about Zynga, uh, about Facebook, for instance, uh, all these games. You don't know which one of these takes off. And so now if you think about your business, right, and you think about the fact that you know, you're advertising out there and you reach this global market, uh, one customer converts. And this customer loves the experience. This customer goes and tells another two people. Those two go tell another four, another eight, 16, so on and so forth. It just multiplies. So life is about taking these bets. And you know, I think Elias, with, the, with, with, with his vision of having you know, this, this platform to pay and to, to make this opportunity real for each and every one of you, uh, has made it come alive. So we've kind of, you know, Elisa and uh, Elias, between the two of them, covered the areas of opportunity, uh, the payments being about you, uh, the third theme for today was Malaysia, and uh, who better to speak about Malaysia and the opportunities uh, that export has for the Malaysian economy than the Honorable Deputy Minister uh, Y.B. Dato Mukri's Tun Mahathir. Uh, just to introduce him, he's a graduate of Sofia University. Uh, he gained significant business experience over 10 years with the Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi. Uh, he also has extensive experience in the travel, advertising, and biotech industries. Uh, so, so clearly, incredible diversity there. Uh, he was elected as a member of parliament in the 2008 election, uh, and he was appointed Deputy Minister of International Trade and Industry the following year. Uh, to, to speak to us, to say a few words, please welcome uh, Dato Mukhriz. Thank you very much. Assalamu um, alaikum and salam satu Malaysia. Ms. Um, Eliza Knox, Regional Managing Director of Online Sales for JPAC Google. Mr. Elias Ghanem, uh, General Manager for Southeast Asia and India PayPal. Distinguished guests, members of media, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this spotlight is not bothering you. It might put a Bit of a glare to you. <laughs> you know how I am. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me, uh, representing the Ministry of International Trade and Industry, uh, to deliver this address at today's very interesting uh, Think Export with um, Google uh, event. Uh, this theme of uh, Think Export is indeed apt, considering the importance of exports to the Malaysian economy. And Malaysia is an open economy, as you know, with international trade accounting for twice our GDP um, of the country. And exports alone account for 110% of the country's GDP. So we depend a lot on, on trade and also uh, on exports. Malaysia is ranked amongst the top 30 most active trading economies in the world. We may be a small country, with a population of only 27 million people, but we rank quite high up there as um, a trading nation. Malaysia's total trade crossed the one trillion ringgit mark in 2006, 2007, and 2008. But the global economic slowdown in 2009 resulted in total trade slipping to 988 billion ringgit. However, projections are that um, our total trade figure will again surpass the one trillion ringgit mark uh, this year, following the gradual recovery in the global economy. And Malaysia's total trade for the latest available period, being um, January to October 2010, was 967.58 billion ringgit, with exports valued at 
529.56 billion ringgit and imports at 538.02 billion ringgit. So it's a large sum. For the period of January to October 2010, Malaysia's total exports increased by 18.1% uh, when compared with the corresponding period of last year. Ladies and gentlemen, Malaysia continues to be a net exporter nation, registering a positive net trade balance, uh, being a surplus for the past 156 consecutive months, which is from November 1997 Till now, we've been enjoying a surplus. It's, there are not many countries that can, uh, can say that. Uh, in 2009, when exports were affected by the slowdown in the global economy, still Malaysia managed to register a trade surplus of 118.35 billion ringgit. So we didn't do so bad, even though um, the rest of the world was really um, uh, impacted by the slowdown last year. The export sector also contributes to the economy through employment generation. A significant proportion of employment in industries such as in uh, electrical and electronics, uh, furniture, textiles and garments are uh, generated by the demand created by the export sector. In 2009, the manufacturing sector alone contributed to 74.4% uh, to Malaysia's total export and generating 28.4% of employment. Um, that totals to about 943,586 uh, jobs. The services sector, such as education, healthcare, and information and communications technology, ICT, um, an increasing proportion of employment in Malaysia is also linked to the export sector. And in 2009, the services sector contributed 57.3%. Seen as important enablers to improve the public sector's delivery system through allowing the simplifica uh, simplification, uh, standardization, and harmonization of existing government processes and procedures, providing greater transparency in public sector processes, which is important, I'm sure, for all of you, facilitating business process re-engineering, by identifying and re removing unnecessary or outdated procedures and regulatory processes. That's a more difficult way of saying red tape. You know? So we try and reduce that. Using the electronic platform to make it easier for the public to transact uh, services with government institutions. I, I know, I think many of you are already filing your, your taxes you know, online and all that. E-commerce can benefit businesses and consumers in Malaysia uh, through opening up worldwide access to businesses and offering greater uh, choice to consumers, uh, enhancing competitiveness and quality of service through adoption of ICT-based applications, uh, customization and personalized products and services to consumers, eliminating intermediaries and providing product availability, um, enabling greater efficiency and lower costs, and also creating new business opportunities and new products and services beyond the physical borders. In the case of Malaysia, initiatives like the National Single Window, or NSW, for trade facilitation, also known as My Trade Link, is an electronic system that enables a secure, safe, and efficient exchange of trade-related documents via a single point of entry. Uh, this is envisaged to further expedite the smooth flow of information pertaining to goods which are either for export, import, uh, or transit. Five core services of the National Single Window have been operationalized since uh, November 19, 2009, and are available through the MyTradeLink online portal. These services are, all of them start with E. Uh, E-Declare, E-Permit, E-Payment, E-Preferential Certificate of Origin, and E-Manifest. A lot of E's out there. In the regional level, the ASEAN member states, or AMS, are working towards establishing the ASEAN Single Window, or ASW. 
The ASW is an environment where the national single window of ASEAN member states will operate and integrate electronically. Currently, two documents have been identified to be exchanged electronically through ASW, and they are the um, Common Effective Preferential Tariff, or SEPT, Form D Preferential Certificate of Origin. It's a very technical term, very long name, but uh, for those who are in the business of exporting, um, this helps them a lot. Uh, then we also have the ASEAN uh, Customs Declaration Document, or ACDD, not, not ACDC, but ACDD, <laughs> which contains common customs data elements for ASEAN member states. Ladies and gentlemen, dependence on exports and the openness of the economy, however, also makes the economy vulnerable to external shocks. In this regard, efforts have been made first uh, to diversify Malaysia's export markets through export market promotion programs. The proportion of Malaysian exports to fast-growing economies such as uh, China, India, and the Middle East uh, region have also continued to grow in recent years. It is important for Malaysian exporters to be in sync with the changing global demand structure. For example, sustainable and energy efficient products uh, will cons constitute an increasing portion of future demand and Malaysian exporters should prepare themselves for these changes in the marketplace. Innovation will be among the key drivers for sustainable export performance in the years ahead. Uh, innovation would take the form of both product and process innovation. Ideally, product innovation would involve the incorporation of new technology and materials with the latest creative designs to meet changing uh, market requirements. Uh, efforts to reinforce the image uh, and reputation in the global market through branding and product and service differentiation are also crucial. Malaysian exporters are also need to tap into new market segments to further expand their market share by employing ICT and adding e-commerce as another line of business in line with the changing trends. And as such, the participation of small and medium enterprises, or SMEs as we call it, in export activities can be further facilitated by e-commerce, considering SMEs make up about 99% of all Malaysian business enterprises, and this is common for any country. Ladies and gentlemen, the services sector is also an increasingly important contributor to exports. Services that Malaysian companies have already started exporting uh, include educational services, healthcare services, construction and related services, um, as well as oil and gas services. The banking and insurance, logistics and information technology sectors have been facilitating other sectors of the economy, including the manufacturing sector. Honorable guests going global requires exporters to be familiar with doing business as well as understanding the business culture in different countries. And in this regard, exporters should leverage on the services op uh, offered by one of our agencies within METI called MarTrade. And the 40 MarTrade overseas offices will also be able to advise you on doing uh, business in your targeted export markets. MarTrade also offers various capacity building uh, programs that would help SMEs enlarge their capacity and competitiveness in marketing overseas, including new ways of doing business via the internet. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to congratulate Google again for their initiative in organizing this event and having the first Think Export in Malaysia. With the economic transformation program, where ensuring broadband for all Malaysians is one of the targeted entry point projects, I am confident that there will be greater prospects in the communications sector. When the broadband capacity is markedly enhanced, more business opportunities will emerge as more efficient internet-based applications are developed. Last but not least, I'd like to wish all participants a very productive session this afternoon. I hope you will gain better insight and information of how one can better leverage on the internet 
and information technology as a facilitator to gain business competitiveness given the dynamic and constantly evolving global marketplace. As for Ms. Eliza Knox and Mr. Elias Ganem, I would like to invite you also to explore the sights and sounds of Malaysia. After all, Malaysia is truly Asia. You we were waiting for me to say that. And with that, I take my leave. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.